We've got an AC not cooling. This uh, today, this is going to be aimed towards beginners, those just getting started in the maintenance or HVAC field that have a good understanding knowledge of electricity. Don't mess with electricity if you don't know what you're doing. That's the disclaimer. This is for entertainment purposes only. We can see the contactor is engaged if we put our meter, which is set to volts, on each side of the coil. We have 26 volts. That means the coil which engages our contactor. Right here we have a L1 and here we have L2. If we go down to L1 and L2, we have 207, 210 volts. If we go from L1 to T1, we should have zero, and we do. If we go from L2 to T2, we should have zero, but we don't. We have 217 volts. The reason that for that is we can see here that this contactor is in just in bad shape. So that's how you quickly diagnose the contactor that is under load. I'm gonna remove the breaker. Another way we can check this contactor if it's good or not with the power off. Let's just make sure we have the power off. We've got zero volts. That's just ghost voltage. This meter beeps with high voltage. So we can switch our meter to ohms. And we're not looking for a particular reading in this case. So L1 to T1. We've got continuity. L2 to T2. We've got an open line, OL. And we can see that the contactor is engaged. So it's bad. Let's replace this. Here's our new single pole contactor. This has the L1 shunt with constant power going through. I've been asked several times about this. Can you use a two pole contactor to replace a single pole contactor on a condensing unit? The answer is sometimes, and that really depends. Do you have something inside of this condensing unit, such as a crankcase heater that needs constant 120 volt. If you don't, then feel free to use a single pole or two pole contactor to replace your bad contactor. Now, we're gonna swap this out. Before we do that, I need to show you new guys, you, we still have 24 volt coming from the air handler, the inside. This is energized still. Even though we are dead down here, we have no voltage down here. We've still got power going to these low voltage wires. Now we don't want our hot low voltage to touch any kind of ground because that's gonna create that's gonna draw some high amps and it's probably gonna blow your circuit board, fuse or transformer or everything if this touches ground for too long. So we wanna be very careful when doing that. The best practice is to just turn the thermostat off. That would be the best way to do it. But I'm just gonna be real careful and not ground that or else I'm gonna be replacing a transformer. Got a video on how to do that. A simple one if you do happen to blow the transformer, but let's swap this out.
All of our connections are tight, torqued down real well. We've got our 24 volt hooked up, contactor is engaged. I know we didn't blow our transformer. Let's reapply power and see if this bad boy starts. Our unit has kicked on. Now just to show you, on L1 and L2 between the two, we have 215 volts between T1 and T2. We also have 215 volts. So there's a connection being made from L2 now to T2 because the contactor coil is engaged making that connection. L1 to T1 is always engaged because there is a shunt right here that always applies voltage. Now this isn't a pitted contactor but it does definitely have electrical damage. You can see the contact plunger is just it's not tight anymore. It's wobbly, it's broken. When the plunger is pulled in, it does not make contacts. It's just sitting there dangling around. So this is more of a contactor that is just, I don't know what you call this, just jacked up. Even though this is for entertainment purposes only, maybe it helps some of you guys out. Let me know in the comments below if you want more content like this, more simpler, basic tutorials. I'm Dave. See you on the next one.